so them i have this one here that uh, we found very interesting which was um a politician if we could just have that on screen a politician should be a family man or woman <laughs> interesting I'd like to hear, I don't know whether I should start with the lady or we can do it. Start with the lady. Okay, the okay, wishes. when it comes to, to uh, being a family man or woman, why do people associate leadership with a family? What, what, what is the, what is the, the trust oh issue? God. Because I hear there's a trust issue. Yes, or rather what is the connection? Yeah. Again, uh, I, I would like to put that into context. Yes. Usually that is mostly here in Africa and in Kenya because mm -hmm. uh, this is the kind of societies we come from, very close-knit societies, very social societies. Mm -hmm. And so someone who has a family is considered to be someone who's responsible, mm -hmm. someone who's able to make uh, the right decisions, to make the correct calculations. Mm -hmm. And so you're generally considered to be a mature person, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. You remember there was a lady, and I'm sorry I've forgotten her name, she was being employed as a I think a high commissioner to uh, Australia or mm -hmm. wa wa one of these things, a representative of Kenya. Mm -hmm. She was around 35. And uh, in the panel, in the vetting panel, one of the questions, uh, one of the uh, vetting uh, panelists asked her, is you're not married, why do you want this job? And mm -hmm. her question was, um, what does my marital status have to do with my qualifications? Mm -hmm. Because she was qualified on mm -hmm. paper, her career, her experience, she had the qualifications mm -hmm. to hold that post. Mm -hmm. But this is a cultural uh, mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. This is a societal aspect, mm -hmm. which is ingrained in us, which is completely difficult to do away with. Mm -hmm. And so it is a perception which is has been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. But increasingly, as people become more knowledgeable, as people expand their mind and perspectives, mm -hmm. get more learned, mm -hmm. it is slowly changing. And we're having more younger people, unmarried people, like uh, uh, the former, I think, uh, Senator Lesuda. Mm -hmm. Yes, she was. Mm -hmm. uh, she came into, you know, into governance unmarried. And she was able to be voted for by a very conservative community, still unmarried. So this is a, a, a very long time held perception, but it is slowly changing. Mm -hmm. But there are some truths to it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, maybe the gentleman can tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so it seems like something that has affected yeah. women yeah. mostly. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's hear from Kabeya then. I think there is a common uh, saying which goes by mm -hmm. charity begins at home. And this is something which people have interpreted in different dimensions, mm -hmm. maybe to fit their own interest. Mm -hmm. But now looking at uh, the current situation in Kenya, we just last year we had an MP by the name Ngeno, mm -hmm. who married at 45 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we have the central bank governor, mm -hmm. who is still unmarried at, I think, 54 years. Mm -hmm. So we have also in history, we have had Charles Jonjo, mm -hmm. who married at, I think, 62 years. Mm -hmm. But now when you look at the context of men and then you bring women, it's totally a different thing. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of perception that we have not seen you exercise maybe leadership or authority in your family because it's believed. Mm -hmm. That's the basic unit of leadership. Mm -hmm. And it's whereby every common Kenyan can come and witness mm -hmm. your leadership. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have not had your CV in the corporate world, mm -hmm. but the way you run your family, maybe your children, or the way they are brought in moral setup, we can be able to gauge your leadership. But as she said, it's something which we need to sh change the mindset because we have seen mm -hmm. the people who have mentioned they have done incredible work in their constituency mm -hmm. without being married. Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter of maybe whether being married or not it define mm -hmm. the type of leadership mm -hmm. which you are going to give to the people. Okay, Mheshimiwa, let's hear from you now. Thank you. I, I, I think I agree with Kaberia and mm -hmm. I agree with Monica mm -hmm. that the society mm -hmm. uh, just it takes it as a norm that having passed through the stages of life mm -hmm. and you've now gone into marriage, mm -hmm. you kind of become a person of your own mm -hmm. uh, and in the traditional sense. Mm -hmm. That now mm -hmm. you can express yourself in the leadership much better. But this, this is the truth in my, from my view. Mm -hmm. That everybody is a family person. You are coming from a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have family responsibilities. You have people, siblings, you have your father, your mother, your father, your grandparents, mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. And I say everybody because everybody has a relative mm -hmm. or some kind of adopted family mm -hmm. of some very close friend mm -hmm. who is like family. Mm -hmm. I think everybody is family. Mm -hmm. and, and I think if you look at it that way, mm -hmm. then you'll be less harsh mm -hmm. to somebody who is delayed in marriage. Mm -hmm. And it could be a family problem. Maybe 
maybe he is delayed in getting his own wife mm. because he's taking care of his sibling. Mm. So he's actually a father, mm -hmm. an married father. He is a father to his brothers and mm. sisters and other ah. kind of thing. Uh, there could be an unmarried woman mm -hmm. who delayed at mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. because of so many responsibilities to do at home. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, like, it's an unfair to judge her mm -hmm. that you are not a family person. Mm -hmm. And this, this person could be the one who takes care of that family. Mm -hmm. So I, I, think, I think it's unfair mm -hmm. to really just say, marriage certificate, mm -hmm. you are okay. Mm -hmm. No marriage certificate, you are not okay. Mm -hmm. I, I think, as we had said before, Mm -hmm. Let us know who mm -hmm. this candidate is, where you're coming from, what is your history, mm -hmm. uh, where, what have you been up to. Mm -hmm. uh, let us ask those questions. Mm -hmm. Then you'll discover mm -hmm. that actually mm -hmm. these people are actually family. Actually, they could be more family yes. than a married fella okay. who is running around, <laughs> not even with his family. <laughs> not even with his family. Okay. <laughs> not with his family. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. So I think it's about to we conclude. But um, I'd like to finish with one, which is... Um, um, Foresight, prudence, caution, and judgment are the ethics of leadership. And yeah. under foresight, um, uh, there's something that you're doing for the young people when it comes to mentorship yeah. as, as, the, as the member of parliament for uh, Better South. And the students there have claimed that it's something we should incorporate in our programs, that we should have a lesson or, or some sort every week in which they just get motivated, where they get to speak to uh, motivational speakers, coaches, life coaches, so they don't give up. So I'd like Mheshimiwa to let us know whether, you. whether what you are foreseeing for your, for your constituents and for your and your, for your students let me start from the mm -hmm. f the the background that yes. in my constituency mm -hmm. there is a, a baseline problem mm -hmm. of that there is too much dropout mm -hmm. because there's business of uh, mira mm -hmm. in the area oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. there people students are dropping out of school mm -hmm. to do business mm -hmm. and and we think this is not right mm -hmm. because the drop out of school before they are fully prepared. Mm -hmm. For instance, they drop out in Sunday the 6th, Sunday the 7th. Mm -hmm. uh, these are real people who can take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. We'd like them to stay in school longer. Mm -hmm. We'd like to introduce them mm -hmm. to another path mm -hmm. that this is not just the only path. Mm -hmm. You can have other paths. Mm -hmm. And therefore, mm -hmm. we introduce, I introduced this uh, mentorship program mm -hmm. and more importantly, mm -hmm. peer mentorship where we bring in students in the universities and colleges to talk to students in uh, high school. Mm -hmm. And we get uh, high school students to mm -hmm. go and talk to primary school. Mm -hmm. And we get professionals to talk to the college students. Mm -hmm. And then you get Mwashimua to mm -hmm. talk to the whole school. Yes, yes, <laughs> I, yes. I saw you talking to the, to the students. I give really? like a commencement mm -hmm. uh, uh, speech mm -hmm. to the big schools. Mm -hmm. And one of them, which I was doing last week, was mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. my biggest school, which is the Nyangwa Secondary School, 1,300 uh, mm -hmm. kids. And it was fantastic. A learning moment for me, a learning moment for them. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to do, in this country, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. We have to raise the next generation. Mm -hmm. And if there is no effort, there is mm -hmm. no concerted effort, a deliberate effort to mm -hmm. raise the next generation, mm -hmm. then we only have ourselves to blame mm -hmm. uh, if we go, we see them going south. Mm -hmm. And in my constituency, mm -hmm. we have seen the thread mm -hmm. of going south. Okay. And that is why we are rescuing. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. It's really very exciting. Mm -hmm. And I will invite, I mm -hmm. think, Kaberia is in, uh, into those kind of programs yes, yes. to come over. Mm -hmm. And just have a weekend mm -hmm. going through schools, having mm -hmm. a nice time mm -hmm. with uh, our, our girls in school, our boys in schools. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. In one of the schools that we went last year, mm -hmm. uh, we were very surprised. They wanted to take 17 kids to university mm -hmm. um, that was their goal mm -hmm. and we talked to them mm -hmm. they have s they have sent 27 to wow. university this year uh -huh. and now they are, their goal is 40 mm -hmm. and and you can see the enthusiasm and it's very exciting really mm -hmm. very exciting mm -hmm. and i think all of us should be involved in this yes. uh, just go there spend some time it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be long mm -hmm. you go during parade they only have it for one hour you get mm -hmm. 15 minutes mm -hmm. It's enough, it's enough to say something mm -hmm. and they'll catch up to it.
Okay, Thank you. okay. Kabiria, do you have any response towards this particular program? Because yeah. um, there are some questions that have come in for you, Mheshimiu. Mm. Mm. Yes. Maybe a quick one. Uh, mm -hmm. When we talk about matters of mentorship, mm -hmm. it's something which has been so much in mm -hmm. my heart and my experience. For the past five years, I've mm -hmm. worked exclusively on youth empowerment programs, mm -hmm. from to Jajiri in KCB Foundation, to mm -hmm. ALX program, which I spoke here another day, mm -hmm. to even being a trainer for KOP, the program by the World Bank. Mm -hmm. And I've been going to the youth to talk to them, and I've seen a very worrying trend with the young people, mm -hmm. especially as this generation mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. problem is actually there are so much so many of them mm -hmm. they have dived so deep in matters of betting and mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. it's actually a bigger even crisis than even the other crisis we think of and so we've been doing uh, intervention programs like uh, we've gone to the university as i've gone to high schools to talk to the people telling them that there are alternatives and when we're talking about leadership we mm -hmm. talk leadership is not about creating followers it's about creating leaders. And I'm so much impressed by what Moshimiwa is doing because mm -hmm. he's giving the first hand experience. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to learn from him, from his experiences. Mm -hmm. And when people get a chance to talk to Moshimiwa at the ground level, mm -hmm. they get a lot of motivation. Mm -hmm. So I think this is something which we need to adopt, even not an, at constituency level, mm -hmm. even the professionals. Mm -hmm. They don't need to sit back in office, mm -hmm. keep the experiences and all that to themselves. Mm -hmm. Because we have seen people with very touching stories. Yes. Some, they only post them on social media, maybe, yeah. but they don't go to the ground. Mm. Those primary school kids are not on social media. Mm. Once you talk to them and tell them I come from a poor family like mm. you, mm. did not get school fees like you, but right, look at me right now. Yes. This is the type of stories we need, that yeah. it's maybe something which we can explore further, mm. and it will totally change the face of the country. All right, great. I don't, mm. I don't even, I can't take away or subtract anything <laughs> from that Cambria. You've sealed the deal. All right, Monica, do you have anything to say? Because um, yes. there's some questions that are yes, coming Yes, yes, and uh, I think it's absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I'm completely impressed by uh, having such kind of leadership. This is yes. a, a, a very um, l a leadership that we, we are looking for in this country. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, that kind of mentorship, the next generation, mm -hmm. is absolutely important because those are the children who are going to make up uh, this country make up the composition of this country in the future yes. which want it to be of, of you know of mm -hmm. excellence mm -hmm. and i think that is absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. and it's interesting that all of us here are involved in those yes. activities yes. i'm also involved in teaching mm -hmm. international relations in public schools through mm -hmm. organization oh. so we are trying to connect these children mm -hmm. with what is here and what is outside because mm -hmm. the world right now as it is mm -hmm. is globalized mm -hmm. and so this <laughs> caring of the future generation that has mm -hmm. come out in this panel is absolutely Absolutely encouraging, yeah. All right, thank yeah. you very much. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. It's so very nice. Even <laughs> encouraging some young people somewhere yeah. in this country. I'm only 25, by the way. <laughs> 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 anyway, anyway, it's about time I read some of your feedbacks. Um, Heshmi, what is, there, is, uh, there are questions for you. Huh? Okay. So, Embu County has the seven folks dam and produce electricity, and bare constituents do not benefit from it because most of the homesteads are not connected to electricity. Water is a problem in Bere, yet we have the dams. How is Mheshmiwa planning to? To help these people that is one question yeah then the other one because i want you to answer them together yeah the other one is um how are you planning up when it comes to the moya national reserve which is an attraction site for tourism and it's and its constituency oh, okay and it's in his constituency <laughs> i think yeah, he's saying that it's, yes that this my national reserve is in your constituency so what is the plan that is chris from makima Bear. wow thank you so much for watching so yes please tell uh, thank you um let me start by saying mm -hmm. uh what the uh, uh the chris mm -hmm. is saying mm -hmm. is uh, absolutely right mm -hmm. we have serious serious mm -hmm. um marginalization problem the seven folks dams. Mm -hmm. We have Masinga Dam, Kamburu Dam, mm -hmm. Gitaru Dam, Kedaruma Dam, Kambere Dam, five dams mm -hmm. in one constituency. Mm -hmm. And then in between, in the dam area, mm -hmm. we have the Mwea Game Reserve, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which nobody visits. Mm -hmm. And I always complain mm -hmm. that my elephants are born there in the bush. Mm -hmm. They're waiting to be photographed by, f by visitors. Mm -hmm. They die before anybody f takes their photograph. Ooh, okay. And I was starting a campaign mm -hmm. uh, to go and look for a, a hyena, mm -hmm. which is endemic to Bere, mm -hmm. and photograph it. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, all Bere hyenas borrow Bere citizens of, uh, of Bere, mm -hmm. hyenas were citizens of Bere, would die. Mm -hmm. 
and become extinct before anybody so ever photographed them. So you want to have pictures at least? At no? least pictures. <laughs> <laughs> at least once, uh -huh. the, once the people of uh, Embu County mm -hmm. go to the park mm -hmm. and photograph, mm -hmm. at least it will be a follow-up. We can have the school trips mm -hmm. and things like that. Okay. So your so school trips might be coming. I, I, want, I want the school, school trips mm -hmm. to go. I want uh, parties to go. I want people to discover mm -hmm. what is right, right there mm -hmm. under their nose. There are mm -hmm. over 175 mm -hmm. uh, elephants mm -hmm. in a very small park. Mm -hmm. Actually, they're overpopulated. Mm -hmm. And they are pushing each other there. Nobody even uh, goes there. And uh, we are reviving that. I'm doing something about that. Okay. About for, for the water. Mm -hmm. The tragedy is mm -hmm. actually between dams, mm -hmm. from Kam Kamburu Dam, for instance, mm -hmm. to Getaru Dam, mm -hmm. water goes underground. Mm -hmm. So the river is dry between the dams. Mm -hmm. Then from, the, from that dam to the mm -hmm. next dam, the river is dry. Mm -hmm. So there's no water. Mm -hmm. We have been dispossessed. Mm -hmm. Hilda is a question of being dispossessed, mm -hmm. disinherited. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a very sad situation. Mm -hmm. So what we've done to address it, first mm -hmm. of all, mm -hmm. we want to restore mm -hmm. uh, the watering points, mm -hmm. which were there traditionally. Mm -hmm. So we pump water from the, from the dams mm -hmm. to the villages mm -hmm. so that people can access water mm -hmm. uh, in the villages, mm -hmm. the way they used to access it when the river had water. Mm -hmm. That is one. Secondly, mm -hmm. a comprehensive plan mm -hmm. to have treated clean water mm -hmm. in every home mm -hmm. in better south. Mm -hmm. Already, uh, we had um, a guest there, the deputy president came there, mm -hmm. and uh, this year we have put 500 million mm -hmm. to start that project. Mm -hmm. And so we are moving very, very fast mm -hmm. uh, into that. Mm -hmm. We must have water. Mm -hmm in better south mm -hmm. we have the biggest river in kenya mm -hmm. river tana passes mm -hmm. through th two tributaries mm -hmm. passes through the same constituency mm -hmm. and yet we don't have water that is not acceptable okay. so we are we are doing something about that mm -hmm. and uh, by next year by next year I by like next that. year okay. when 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 the budgets come mm. because we've just started mm -hmm. uh, people will begin to see uh, what we are doing uh, mm -hmm. with the water Mm -hmm. So yes, there are problems. Mm -hmm. They're endemic. They are. They've been there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And to me, mm -hmm. we've been dispossessed. Okay. We produce electricity. Mm -hmm. We don't have it. Yeah. For the electricity, we mm -hmm. get the normal quota mm -hmm. uh, uh, for rural electrification, which is about 30 million a, a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my constituency mm -hmm. is half of mm -hmm. Bere County. Mm -hmm. It is so large. Mm. It's larger than the other three constituencies mm -hmm. put together. Mm -hmm. So again, it's unfair mm -hmm. to give us a quarter, mm -hmm. same as Banyata, which is Ebu Town, mm -hmm. which is full of electricity. Mm -hmm. Where do they take uh, transformers? Mm -hmm. So again, we're having that conversation and saying, no, you have to uh, empower us. You have to have some intervention mm -hmm because mm -hmm. this community was mm -hmm. dispossessed mm -hmm. when you created these dams mm -hmm. so in the in a way of paying back mm -hmm. csr mm -hmm. then you have to give us more okay uh, we are working on that we've done two surveys mm -hmm. and the reports are underway uh, for that program so they can expect some change yes they can expect some change okay. actually they, they should not expect some change <laughs> we are saying we are there to change lives mm -hmm. We are going to change lives. Mm -hmm. We are going to put more money in their pockets. We are going to have a better lifestyle. We are going mm -hmm. to have more roads. We are going to have water. We are going to be like any other Kenyan mm -hmm. living in Nairobi or any other place. Mm -hmm. They just, just prepare mm -hmm. for a transformation. No change. Okay, no I like that. Prepare for a transformation. As you've heard from Heshimiwa himself, very South MP, Juan Joffrey Kingang. He's been with us in studio and he's been courteous, he's been courteous enough to even answer some of the tough questions you've thrown to him today. Thank you so much for honoring the Y254 family with your presence. Thank you so much for answering the questions of the young people. For my analyst today, Monica, on boy and Kaberia Barry, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for putting your fo your points across as well without fear. And anyway, please make sure you do catch up with Youth and Politics. We do this every Monday between eight to nine o'clock, only on Y in the morning on Y254 TV. My name is Hilda Wadidi. Please do not go anywhere.